Welcome everyone to tonight's episode of Profound States. Uh, tonight we have special guest Jim Andre. He's a retired Massachusetts, Massachusetts constable and motor coach, motor coach bus driver, an abductee, contactee, and an avid UFO extraterrestrial researcher. Uh, he periodically receives random intermittent informational downloads from the Zeta Reticuli. And uh, since his abduction, he has the ability to successfully energetically, energetically heal others. And he was, he has a connection, he believes, to the, uh, his birthday is the same as Betty and Barney Hill's abduction. Uh, I was born six months before their abduction, so he was born on their abduction day. So, um, I will not read the rest of it. I'll just let that go. Welcome to tonight's show, Jim. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So let me change my lighting again. It keeps changing on me. Uh, thank you for having me on, Charles. I, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for being on the show. Let's see if we can uh, change my lighting. There we go. That's a little better. It keeps changing. When I put something on the screen that's white, it puts out a lot of light. And it looks like I've got a lot of light, and then I take the thing white off the screen, and all of a sudden I'm uh, in the dark again. <laughs> so, all right. So why don't we reverse uh, the story here for a little bit? And before your one abduction, it sounds like you've only been abducted once. Right. Uh, what? Uh, what is the very first strange, odd thing that happened in your life? Is it the abduction? Surely something ch ch strange happened to you before your abduction. Well, I mean, uh, I wasn't uh, really privy to any of this uh, until the uh, late fall of 2012 when I started doing my research, you know, and, and found out about Bonnie and Betty Hill when they were abducted and uh, which was coincidentally my eighth birthday, September 19th, 1961. Uh, I kind of like felt a connection to that in some way, which I have no way of verifying. But, uh, you know, and I've, I've always seen like different strange craft in the sky that, that I wasn't aware of what they actually were. Uh, that's happened to me uh, quite frequently up there when I was in Massachusetts. Since retiring, I've relocated to Lake Wales, Florida, but in the fall of 2012 uh, is uh, what what really got me as far as the abduction goes is uh, well as you said I'm a retired constable and motor coach bus driver I used to have to get up early in the morning to drive motor coach I distinctly remember it was a Wednesday night and uh, I was sitting down in front of the computer and I noted the time on the lower right hand corner of the computer monitor you know, to see what time it was with a thought that I had to get up early to drive bus the next morning. And the time it uh, was 9.15 p.m. All of a sudden, I just it seemed like I just went out. Uh, and when I came to, I'm looking around the room in a daze. And I, I glanced over at the alarm clock and it said 2.57 a.m. And I'm looking around trying to gather my thoughts. And then all of a sudden, I found I felt a an intense burning sensation on my right forearm. And I know this sounds bizarre and I was really beside myself. Um, there's a tattoo on my forearm that depicts an alien gray. And this is the tattoo here. Now, um, this tattoo, um, I've got other tattoos that I've obviously got on my own, but this particular tattoo didn't uh, uh, scrape up or like a uh, didn't scab up like a scrape or an abrasion um, and take seven to ten days to heal like a conventional tattoo. With this tattoo here, it blistered up like a like a boil. And when it healed, it peeled. It never scabbed up. It peeled like a sunburn. And it healed within three days. How long does it take for a normal? Uh, yeah, a normal, normal conventional tattoo takes like seven to ten days to heal. 
fully heal. And it scabs up before healing. And this one here never scabbed, it blistered up like a like a boil or a blister. And when it healed, it peeled like a sunburn and healed within three days. Okay, so uh, besides the fact that there's a gray on your arm, why did you feel like it was that them who took you? Other than the well, fact because, that you have a photo. Because of the fact that I was so beside myself that I didn't mention it to anyone. I held it in for over a year. And during the course of that time, I was trying to rationalize everything out within myself. And I started getting um, telepathic uh, downloads or informational downloads from the Zetas. And uh, to make me understand what actually transpired, I have no vivid memory of being on their, their ship, but uh, I was abducted. They did uh, brand me with this tattoo. And um, I have a much more understanding of, of why uh, than I did at first. Um, my my outlook on nature, you know, life itself and the universe for that matter is completely different than what it used to be before my abduction. So uh, tell me tell me about the downloads. Well, the downloads, it's not something I can initiate. They just come to me when they're ready to to send me some information. Um, it's kind of like a, a how to explain it, how I receive it is like a thought process. Um, since my my abduction, I'm also able to energetically heal others, which I've been successful at doing sessions over the Internet. And I've got uh, individuals who can verify that. Um, I've got when I do the sessions uh, over the Internet, uh, they're 20 minutes long and I've got a uh, frequency soundtrack that was actually arranged and put together by the Zeta Reticular themselves for the very purpose of healing. So we go back to your, to the uh, before the healing. We'll get into that in a minute, but go back to the downloads. How do you uh, what's a download? feel like or well how do, how do you receive it? it it's a it's like a thought process it's um it's usually when I'm, I'm i'm either meditating or which i don't really seek it but it'll come to me when it does or when i'm in like in between a, a sleep and, a, and an awake state so but how does it manifest within you is it is it thoughts is it Words, yeah, it's a, yes, it's, uh, it's, images, it's, it's, is it it's, all it's, of the above and more? Yeah. Or? It's thoughts, it's thoughts and images when they come through, yes. So is it fast, is it slow? What's the uh, most profound download you've had? What what information have you received that that stands out even among all the download, other downloads? Okay, well, for instance, the Georgia Guidestones that were sabotaged, okay? Um. They were sabotaged by the Zeta Reticula. Okay, they 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 fired a laser from from the sky and destroyed the Guidestones to send a message to the one percent who are in control of everything and have the agenda to want to form a new uh, world order, a one world government, and uh, depopulate the planet by ninety five percent. Okay, because that that is basically what the Georgia Guidestones represented. Uh, and it also, they also sabotaged it on the same day that they were refiring up the Hadron Collider, the Atom Smashing Collider, which they're against, totally against, because they claim that these scientists don't know what they're playing with. So the day that they were to uh, restart, uh, you know, their experiments with the Collider was the same day that they sabotaged uh, Georgia Guidestones to send them a message. And the one percent know they know that. Of course, they're not going to tell anybody else that. So um, basically, what the Zetas are trying to get to them, the message they're trying to send them is, stop playing with the Collider because you don't know what you're playing with. So, in other words, we live in such a dangerous world right now, with nuclear weaponry and and them senselessly uh, uh, keep uh, uh, empowering that Collider with with more and more power with each with each experiment that they do, um, you know, 
in order in order to preserve the planet. You see, the, these extraterrestrials plan to intervene, not necessarily to save man from man himself, but to save the planet, our precious planet, and all other innocent species around man. Okay. Because man is the most detrimental species in the world, and and I will say this: uh, what they what they've said to me is that man's curse is his intelligence. Okay, what do I mean by that? For example, a cow grazing in a field is more than likely satisfied by doing just that, grazing in a field. But man, due to his intelligence, will never truly. He distorts the simplicity of nature. And he will never truly be satisfied until he self annihilates. OK, now you can have a colony of 90 billion ants. In one colony. In one community that get along perfectly within the harmony of nature and amongst themselves without any friction whatsoever with a brain. One millionth the size of man's. What's man's excuse? See how that our intelligence is our curse. Our, our intelligence is what's brought forth all these these technologies that endanger ourselves. OK, we got no one. We got no one to fear but ourselves. We compete against no one but ourselves. All right, we're a species capable of saving lives with one hand while deliberately destroying lives with the other which displays a, an intelligence which is somewhat flawed. You see, and we're the only you see what, what in your opinion, what is the number one demon in the in the whole world? Uh, well, uh, to be honest, uh, my idea about demons is. A little unique. Um, I think it's actual demons. <laughs> Well, no, I'll, I'll tell you what the number one demon in this in this whole world is. See, let, let, let me let me go this way. Let me start this way. When other species are born into this world, they're born slaves to survival. See, when a man is born into this world, he is he is born with a double whammy. OK, he's not only born a slave to survival, he's born a slave to society. Now, as soon as he's born, He's groomed by society itself, indoctrinated and formed into what society wants that individual to become. OK, right from birth, he gets a birth certificate. There's a birth record. He gets the Social Security number, identification number, and they keep track of that individual from birth to death. And what he learns as he grows is what society chooses to teach him. OK. If you notice all all teachings are the same all across the board and that's all by design because they want to teach you the way they want you to learn. OK, so you're indoctrinated right from birth. OK, so you're not born free. You're born a ward of the state. There's no such thing as free. Even when you own property, you have to pay property tax. If you don't pay it, They'll take your property away from you. So there's nothing free in this world, nothing free within society. But the number one demon in this world itself is currency, and that's also by design. See, because these men with great minds knew that whoever had the most currency had the most what? Power to control the others, see? And that's exactly what they've been doing for a very long time. Now, now currency, we're the only species on Earth. That seems to need currency in order to survive, OK? Now, currency is the number one demon in a way that. The almighty buck, the love of money, the love and the want of money, OK? The need of money to survive to begin with. We beg it, we beg, we borrow, we steal, we kill each other for currency. What do you think wars are generated for? Currency. So the number one demon in the world is currency. You want a better world to live in, eliminate any form of currency. That would be the good that, that would be a good start. Now religion. I don't knock any religion. 
I believe, I believe there's a higher power. There is a higher power. It's an energy in the form of an energy, an infinite energy that makes all things possible. See, within this energy, there's opposite polarities, a positive and a negative, which with the human psyche we we view as being good or evil, right or wrong. But to be fair, when we're born, we're born unto a uh, realm which is a chaotic random unforgiving realm that's just the way this realm is you see we're just as much a part of nature man is just as much a part of nature as everything else around him but man has this bad habit of trying to overrule or manipulate nature which he will never be able to do nature will always rule over man man has got this idea that the earth belongs to him when in reality Man belongs to the earth. You see, and that's going to be man's downfall. So you think the biggest problem is the human ego? No, no, as far as religion is concerned, you know, you, they talk about divinity, but yet the Bible teaches you that uh, Satan is evil, uh, but God is divine. And the divine one who created us, according to the Bible, you know, he rules with a stern, stern hand. He says, if you sin, you will be cast. Out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um, you know, if if you sin. You'll be condemned to eternal damnation and burning hell throughout eternity. Now, a good and loving God to me, that could be scarier than Satan himself. Satan didn't uh, invent the idea of hell, God did. Okay. And the good and loving God is also admitted to kill in millions by flood. Why? Because he's God and he can, I suppose. But that's going against one of the Ten Commandments he says that you shouldn't do. Thou shalt not kill. So in that respect, he's not a very good role model. So even with what the Bible teaches, where, where would the divinity be in that? Is there a such thing as divine? The definition of the word divine is without sin. So the, the, biggest, the biggest deception with religion is that they separate good and evil, see? But there really is no separation. It's actually all the same. There's a choice that you go by with an intent, but there's a positive and a negative, a negative within the singularity. There is no separation. There's just choice. So there's really no God up there in a, in a physical sense, or or a demon down there called Satan. The only place that that concept exists is within the mind of the human psyche, nowhere else in nature or any other species. And why is that? For control, see? That, that's control. Do you realize the Catholics, the, the, the Vatican, has for many years practiced, e practiced evil under the guise of good? Did you know that Mother Teresa was a child trafficker? They had access to children in third world countries. And this is, that's, that's exactly what they did. And of I've course, heard of and of course, if, of course, we all know today about all these. For decades, this went on with the Catholic priests molesting the altar boys. So all the Vatican ever did was practice evil under the guise of good. And of course, you know, not to mention how rich they are off our, our sweat, or those who believe in that, that particular uh, religion. It's all about money and control. That's all it's about. So you have a doggy? Yes, sir. Well, actually, there's actually two here now. I had just a German Shepherd Rambo, but now I got Rambo and my son dogs, my son's dog, uh, Pitbull Duke. <laughs> hey! <laughs> My God. You heard his name.
All right, I should be all set for now. Quiet, Rambo. <laughs> so, all right, so let's go back to your story. So you, uh, you got abducted once and you uh, got a tattoo, you're getting downloads and you're healing people. So of all the things you've healed, what's the most interesting thing you've healed? Well, I think the most interesting thing I do that I, I get, I feel more of a reward with is, is being able to heal others. I've actually, I've actually uh, helped people out with terminal disease, uh, cancer. Uh, if somebody's got a headache, I can over with a session online, you know, get rid of the migraine or whatever it might be, uh, toothaches. And I can verify all this. It's I can validate it through with different individuals who have experienced that with me. And I don't charge anything. I don't charge anything for it. It's got nothing to do with with any type of business. So what kind of things do the Greys give you in your downloads? What do they give me? Well, I've got Yeah, I've got, what what kind of information do they give you? Well, such as what I'm talking about now. Uh, they're trying you mean to like how to heal people. Well, how to heal people. Um, they gave me that that soundtrack though, to help out in that process, which is a, a harmonic uh, frequency healing frequency. Uh, my my understanding of what I've been just talking about has been brought to me by them. Um, you mean the what, philosophy you were just discussing? right, 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 and and, and what. You know, what we are basically is a product and result of a biological experiment performed by a higher intelligence of life, which is the extraterrestrials themselves, okay? Our DNA and the DNA of the great ape species is 98 to 99% identical. So what they did was through genetic manipulation and artificial insemination, between the great ape species and the extraterrestrials, they created man. And since they created man, they set him free. And they've been observing him uh, from a behind the scenes approach. There's been two, uh, they don't want to intervene directly with man because they realize that we're free will spirits. There's been two historic uh, interventions which they had to intervene. The first one was to enhance man's knowledge. <laughs> Man was was being too slow to advance intelligently. So what they did was they created the island of Atlantis as a learning facility to jumpstart man's knowledge. Now that was around the, uh, you know, the era when they built the pyramids, they taught man mathematics, calculation, engineering, astrology, all them things. They built the pyramids, and back then in that era, pyramids were built on all four corners of the world, and that would never have happened naturally with man back then, and there was no communication like we have today. And scientists and, and architects today will attest that they can't duplicate the precision with what them pyramids, how, how them pyramids were built. With all the so, technology we have today, they can't duplicate it. So, so, so go ahead. So have the Zetas mentioned anything about any of the other races? Oh yeah, a, oh yeah, there's other races. There's tall grays. The, but but the, I mean, what I'm saying I'm not asking you your knowledge. I'm asking you if the Zetas directly gave you any downloads in reference to the other beings. Well, they've given me knowledge that other other uh, alien beings exist. Yeah, there's probably uh, about maybe. 65, 66 other species. So what what did they mention about the other races? Well, it's basically uh, what there is is like an intergalactic extraterrestrial, uh, you know, coalition, if you will. Uh, you know, they're from different planets. They're from different dimensions. You mean like on gets, Star Trek, like, like on Star Trek? Right, right. I mean, there's, there's different dimensions, there's parallel universes, and I mean, it, it gets in depth, you know what I mean? It can, it can be or seem complicated, 
but there's uh, some type of uh, uh, treaties between a lot of the species where, you know, they, they have some type of uh, uh, rules and regulations and laws to abide by concerning, you know, not only life here on Earth, but maybe other planets and other dimensions. Um, it's not just like uh, they're not intelligent and they randomly do whatever they feel like doing. You know, they got laws as well as, as we do uh, concerning what they can do and, and when they can do it or, or what reason they're going to do it for. Um, so have they, mentioned anything about the, have they mentioned anything about the future? Yes. Uh, what did they say about the future? Well, one thing we got to watch out for, if you'll notice recently with the government and the Pentagon coming out, uh, with the truth that, oh, yes, yes, uh, now we see these unidentified flying objects. We don't know exactly what they are, but we're thinking, yes, you know, the way they perform, uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, maneuver the way they maneuver, you know, against the law of physics as we understand it. Uh, it seems to be an intelligent type of life, but we're not sure who or what they are. Then they say, well, uh, we don't know if it's a weather balloon, a spy balloon. Uh, you know, now now if you, if you stop to think about it, common sense, we've got an added branch. We've got an added branch of service. The Space Force. Now they're supposed to have all this technology guided uh, space above the Earth. Uh, Space above the Earth, God, I have space here on Earth, but yet they don't know what it is. Okay, I'm going to tell you why they're coming out with all this. And the reason is be prepared for an upcoming false flag alien invasion. Okay, they have the, the uh, technology today for holograms. You can go see Michael Jackson at a concert and swear he's right there up on stage. Well, that's the type of technology they're going to use for this false flag alien invasion. You're gonna see, actually, you're, you're gonna really believe, people are gonna believe they see alien craft in the sky firing weaponry, when in reality, the weaponry will be being fired by the military industrial complex itself. Okay, and that's one of the so, biggest scares that they're so gonna the put So the Zetas told you this, or you just came up with yes, the idea? Yes, yes. They told and, you. And, 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 and that's going to be the biggest scare that they've ever put in the masses. And once that is all said and done, if that ever gets to that point, they'll be able to go ahead to form their new world, one order, a new world government with little or no resistance at all from the masses. And they will go on with their agenda. Well, maybe that's where 95% of the population is going to be eliminated. So, but does that is also say, there's a plan for them to intervene. So I'm hoping they intervene before the powers that be get to the point where they try to pull that fast one on us. And like I said, they're not going to intervene to save us from ourselves. You know, we're just an ongoing random experiment. You know, we made our own bed, uh, you know, as far as they're concerned, we can sleep in it, but they have to protect not only the planet, but, you know, other species around us and, and themselves. Because when they use that Hadron Collider, you know, the, the universe, uh, one theory is, began with a Big Bang, well, it could possibly end with one. So what else did they and, and that And that would, in, in fact, have an effect on them as well. So they, 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 gotta, they, gotta, they gotta intervene, they have no choice. So what else did the Zetas tell you? Well, there's other things I can say. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I got some dates as well, but uh, I'm not allowed to say that until the time is right. So what else can you say that they told you? Well, basically, I think I've covered most of it. OK, uh, so there's going to be a false flag event. Right. They. Um, they. Destroyed the Georgia guys' towns. Correct. Um, they're not hooked up with the elite. They're competitors with the elite, sounds like. Right, well. Got it all right so far? Yeah, 
Yeah. In other words, they're against what the elite uh, are attempting to do because of the fact that, you know, that they're, they're radical. You know what I mean? They, they, they're, they're playing with something. They, they have no idea what they're playing with. I mean, they, they're, they're going in places where, you know, man has never been before or, or know what the results will be. So you're saying the Zetas are better than we are, better than our elite? Well, you know, you know, the Zetas, they're not really, uh, what they are are clones of each other, okay? They're emotionless. They don't have emotion. What they are basically is scouts. You know, they're all clones of each other. That's why they all look exactly alike. They're more robotic or, or artificial intelligence, if you will. They're scouts. They they scout the universe, and, and more like maybe a police agency would serve and protect. So, what do you think about the breeding? Where the uh... well, the breeding is uh, is biological. I don't know what type of technology they would use to reproduce themselves, but they're all clones of each other, and uh, they're all scouts, emotionless. They they just have a job to do. And but you're and familiar with the goals. breeding process, right? The one that they have been involved in. Oh, you mean uh, as far as humans? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, the first time they intervened was to jumpstart man's knowledge with the uh, island of Atlantis, and at that point they did advance man's knowledge, but then they noticed that even though man's knowledge was advanced, he was barbaric. Now, what do I mean by that? The Romans, for example taking delight in observing blood sports involving death and dismemberment, right? So they said, well, even though we've, we've advanced his intelligence, he's now, he's now barbaric. So now we've got to do some type of other intervention so that he doesn't remain uh, stagnant in a, bar in a barbaric society. That's when they introduced Jesus to millions worldwide. Jesus, Jesus was an alien, okay? Now, now, Mary, how could she possibly uh, have a child without a partner? That's a very easy explanation. She was beamed up into an alien craft, and they inserted what could be termed the essence of Jesus into her womb. So she had Jesus. Now, they, there's talk of the three wise men following the star of Bethlehem, when in reality, they were following an alien craft. To Bethlehem for for Jesus' birth. Okay, now when they crucified him, the uh, <coughs> the Jews. Uh, how did he he rise in three days? Same way it was an alien craft. Uh, that was to to enhance man's thought process into believing in something other than just himself him more morals more you know so he wouldn't remain in a barbaric society so that's two major interventions in the past and the third major intervention is about to come um you know and and you know if you stop to think about it you you can't say that man is as processed through natural evolution for the simple reason that usually when a species goes from uh, one extreme to another the the previous species becomes extinct so you're going to ask yourself this question why is it that the primates have been here for millions of years still sharing the earth with modern man okay and after you question that that leads to the next question what happened to all the missing links in between well what happened to all the missing links in between is that each missing link was a version of the ongoing experiment that didn't live up to the extraterrestrial's expectations were terminated when replaced by a newer version. Right now, we're the newest version of this ongoing experiment, and I must add, the most lethal. Not so only to ourselves, but to everything else around us. So let's say for a moment that you're correct about the Greys. They're emotionless clones. Right. Okay, so... Uh, do you believe in the breeding pro the breeding the abduction breeding process oh yeah yeah okay. i do yeah i believe it's hybrid aliens i mean we all have alien dna 
uh, so, what I did. So if you believe in the abduction of women who are u being used as hybrid breeders by the greys who are emotionless clones, so you have to ask yourself, why, why are they doing it and what's the purpose? And well, the purpose of abductions could be a number of reasons. I believe that they've already abducted some people they haven't returned and brought them to other planets in order to preserve. Uh, I also believe they've also preserved every other missing link of the human species from the past on other planets. They never really terminated them fully. So, and I, and I also believe that there's there's humans from today that have been abducted and taken off planet because we're so detrimental to ourselves and everything else around us. If we were to become extinct, they could prevent that in that manner. Well, the, the theory that a lot of us have come up with is that, um, or the theory I came up with, I don't know how many people have come up with it besides me, but theory I came up with is Okay, so they're emotionless and they're clones. So if they're emotionless clones, that means that uh, they bred the emotions out of themselves and now we have emotions and they're breeding with us. Therefore, logically speaking, they're uh, wanting th those emotions back. And the rumor was that they basically almost killed themselves off in a war and they, that's the reason why they bred their emotions out because of the the heat of battle showed showed them that they need to have less emotions or other or else they're going to kill themselves off. So that's why they bred it, the emotions out. And but then they started cloning because once you lose your passion, your emotions, there's no reason for breeding. There's no reason to have sex with the uh, the opposite. A sex, a male or female, if you have no passion for that other being. If you have no emotion, you have no passion, therefore there's no normal sex drive. So right. that's when they get into cloning. But so, even even the, even the clone itself has to be um, uh, operated with some type of energy that allows it to operate, okay? So this energy, you know, to me, uh, the extent of God is an infinite energy that makes all things possible. It's a source, okay? Um, there's energy in everything, even inanimate objects. They got atoms and protons and all that stuff that make up the object. So, so without this energy, there would be nothing. See, there's no such thing as nothing at this point, okay? But if man is, is left unattended and free to do whatever he wants, you know, and ends up destroying this universe, all that would be left is nothing instead of something which exists right now. So <clears throat> them clones uh, are moving on the same energy that makes everything else possible. So when they, when they terminate or they die out, everything is in a recycling process. That's what nature is, a recycling process, all tied in with that one infinite energy, okay? So the extent of God is, is the source, the energy source that moves us, the air that we breathe, and our consciousness. Okay, because you have to have awareness in order, you know, ex existing without aware awareness is meaningless. But no matter what exists, it's always recycled in nature, see? The one law of nature is that nothing lasts forever. Okay, but nature's way of compensating for that is to exist in cycles. And there's no better teacher in the world than nature itself. All you have to do is look around you. Nature is a never ending recycling process from day and night, seasons to lifetimes. We've lived many lives that we cannot recall. Some have glimpses of past lives. You know, you get deja vu, you know, like you've done that same exact thing before. Um, but but death is not really something to be, to fear. What death is is a transition to a new beginning. 
And that's a never ending recycling process of nature. So whatever clones are out there, they have they have uh, when they're not when they become non existent, untied from this energy that's moving them now. They'll have a choice to come back, you know, maybe in the flesh. But but they're needed in the state they're in right now to control. What could happen here on Earth, basically, and I, I don't mean only here on Earth, I'm sure there's there's other planets and solar systems and galaxies where where others are needed as well. So the what I was talking about just a minute ago. Um, do you believe all that? Do you believe they bred their emotions out and now they want the emotions back? Does that sound logical? Yeah, well, I'm sure they're, they're you know, they're much more far advanced than we are. I'm sure they understand the process of of the energy. Um, I sure I think they know a lot more about it than we do. And I'm sure they understand that, you know, when their time is up within what, what they're doing in the realm that they're existing in now, that they'll recycle into something else down the road. There's probably no doubt in their mind. I'm, they're probably sure of it, more sure of it than we can be. You know, but the thing is, if everything gets destroyed, see, that's the thing you have to protect, is that infinite energy. I mean, you know, it is, was, and always will be, but will it always be? If there's a lethal, a lethal element like man involved, and he does something to trigger something that will 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 uh, destroy that energy everybody loses not only man but all other species all other aliens and and whatnot see so so that goes back again to what i said before that they don't have any choice but to intervene well you you do understand that uh because they're clones and they need to survive they they can't clone forever and we have the one thing we have that they don't have is genetic variability so by breeding interbreeding with us they're extending their species because it if they uh, can successfully breed with us then uh that will lengthen their their lifespan their their uh survival ability of the species of their species because they will be reintroduced to uh, genetic variability as opposed to being clones well there are other alien species like the nordics that that really resemble human beings that that have genitalia as far as i'm i'm on as far as from what i know the the grays don't even have genitalia yeah correct and so but um but they're not inseminating us with sex they're taking as far as i understand it they're taking their sperm from males that um you know i don't even know why they would produce sperm considering they have no genitalia well, but that's it. So, um, but there are rumored to be species like the uh, Essasani who are in the future that are a, a, a merging of humans and greys. And so um, that's a different species, but that if that's, if they're created from what the greys are doing now, that wouldn't be grays saving themselves. That'd be the grays creating another species that's not them or us. It's just a different race that's hasn't quite taken off. Yeah. Well, what it is is genetic manipulation. Yeah. It's that's, that's what it boils down to. That's how we were. We, we were uh, uh, created through genetic manipulation. Well, um, we're nearing the hour, and um, I don't know that you 
Do you have anything else you want to say to the people? Um, you have a show of your own, a podcast, right? Yeah, it's called Out of the Box Podcast, yeah. So what do you do on your podcast? Oh, I talk about aliens and subjects we're talking about now. You know, I have guests on, you know, every now and then. So, I got a co-host, Bradley Powers, that joins me. So of all the podcasts you've had, is there one, or is there any one or multiple podcasts that you can remember that you, that you feel are worth mentioning that, you know, like a particular guest you had that you found interesting or. Uh, uh, you know, it's not only that, that I have my own podcast. I've been on other shows the Jesse Hall show, uh, numerous uh, radio shows. Uh, when I was still up in Massachusetts, uh, uh, when I first came out with my abduction experience, it was uh, on a local cable TV channel, which was a half hour interview. Uh, you know, it's I just I'm an, an advocate of what I've learned just to. You know, I've also started a. Uh, uh, a Facebook page called the Alien Connection Truth Network, which has about 120,000 members at the moment. And I, I, I started pretty, that. Pre- pretty impressive, 120,000. That's not. Yeah, yeah. That's... I, uh, I started that as a, a way of researching uh, my experience uh, further, and uh, you know, I use that as a forum for others to join, other experiences to join and be able to talk about their experiences freely without the fear of being ridiculed in any way. It's an open forum, especially for that, so. So have you considered writing a book or have you? I I have, yeah, yeah. And (laughs) at this point in time, the title would be uh, Man, an Endangered Species. And do you have any um before we end the recording is there any um anything else you'd like to say to the masses about yeah well one of one of my favorite quotes is that uh you see everybody looks for the truth but there is no one truth the closest that anybody will come to the truth in this lifetime is what each individual perceives as being their truth in other words what they believe see so there are many truths and the bottom line is, this is my favorite quote, the bottom line is life is a journey to be experienced, not a problem to be solved. So you're, what is your, how does somebody find you in uh, YouTube or Facebook? Well, I've got the YouTube channel, that's the Alien Connection Truth Network uh, on YouTube. I got Alien Connection Truth Network on Facebook. It's a Facebook, uh, Facebook group. And I've also got a personal website, um, you know, with the same topic uh, at the uh, URL address, Jim Andre. That's J-I-M-A-N-D-R-E dot net, Jim Andre dot net. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, is it best to go through Facebook or your personal? Yeah, YouTube, you go through Facebook. Look up do you Jim want to Andre. give out your email address? Or how to... Yeah, yeah well, my, uh, my email is on Facebook. My I believe my phone number is listed. Uh, look me up on Facebook. They can message me on Facebook. Uh, they can visit my uh, website, jimandre.net. And uh, there's a way, uh, a box will pop up if they want to email me. So... Yeah. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me, Charles. I mean, I appreciate it. If you uh, any, want to say any last thing, we're I'm about to end the record. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thank you for being on. You have okay. a good evening now. Hold on now. We'll stop the recording.